beautiful day here in Oakland Ballpark. Another good day for some baseball. Friday night had some big time offensive hitting performances for the Cowboys and the Jayhawks. But today we got uh, some big time pitchers going and uh, we're going to have our hands full trying to get a Big 12 win here on the road for the Cowboys and Jayhawks. It's make or break it time for that season. Just a big time offensive performance yesterday for the Jayhawks. They hit the ball very hard innings one through five, pretty much all the way through the game. Maui, Ahuna, Blaine Ray, I thought both those balls were gone. Big time defensive performances, plus plays in the outfield. Rob Job right there. And if some of the tallest outfielders I've seen, guys that can really run and play defense. But this big inning all started right here. Catcher's interference. I never saw it, but sold it like it did and third baseman over there that's one of the best sticks there, there is in the country these balls are down below the knees just an offensive performance 15 hitters reach base safely there in, in that inning one of the biggest innings i've ever seen and that's a guy who laid down a drag bunt and hit a grand slam in the same inning batting out of nine hole so what a potent lineup one through nine so you can see 13 runs 17 hits and for the jayhawks you're just as good as your next day starting pitcher and Eli Davis has been the man for them this season. Welcome into Big 12 Baseball here on ESPN Plus. Full and cast alongside Kevin Wheeler as the Kansas Jayhawks take on the Oklahoma State Cowboys in Sunday afternoon action here in Lawrence, Kansas. Real quick, your starting lineup for the Cowboys, Oklahoma State. Letting off will be Caden Trinkle in center field batting first, followed by Max Hewitt playing second base. And Chris and Carnarcion Strand will play third base and bat third. Jake Thompson, the designated hitter, will bat cleanup, followed by Carson McCuster, the left fielder, batting fifth. Brock Mathis behind the dish will bat sixth, followed by Cabe Cabanis in the seventh spot playing in right field. Houston Morrow is the shortstop playing batting eighth and Alex Garcia the first baseman will round out the nine on the butt for KU today it's Eli Davis and Kevin what do you expect to see out of Eli Davis today in this Sunday afternoon start well it all started back at that Baylor series he has been dynamite the last three weekends getting wins in Big 12 play and what he's been able to do is work both sides of the plate he's been pitching inside for show and just living on the outside corner he's a little guy but he has a big time fastball breaking ball and he's going to need it today this, this is one of the best lineups I've seen one through nine they can really hurt you even at the bottom part of this order and Kevin what do you think KU's going to need to do to pull off the upset here against the Cowboys on Sunday well, it's something they've done before. I've seen this uh, same ball club uh, under Coach Price. They're a resilient bunch. Yeah, they never say die. I've seen them get beat 26 to 1 here against Oklahoma State on a Friday and end up winning the series. So uh, there, there's guys on this field who've done that. Ditsenberger, that's why they call them Big Hits Dits. Two swings of the bat. So it's never over till it's over. What I was most impressed with, even after the big 11 run inning, Jayhawks still fought. They were battling all the way through and great pitching performances for some freshmen at the end of that game. Under Coach Price, this team shows fight all the way to the finish. First pitch just misses for ball one from Eli Davis, and we are underway here in Lawrence. Umpire's day home plate is Jason Millsap. First base, Michael Mazzarisi. Second base, Blake Felix. And third base, Seth Buckminster. That one misses down in a quick 2-0 for Eli Davis. And Eli Davis, standing only 5'8", Kevin, still gets a decent amount of velocity as the lefty here with his fast one, of course, an excellent breaking ball from Davis. Yeah, that was 93, and it looks like he's uh, just playing catch. You know, it's not overthrowing, it's just good mechanics. You notice when he gets done, he looks like a shortstop. He made a play from the dugout last night that was awesome, but he, he's an extra defender out there because of how well he defends his position. See what Davis and company go with here on a 2-1 pitch. Misses outside yet again, three and one. And Davis, he's really good at pumping that fastball in there, can get there, you know, the low, even possibly touching the mid-90s. But I've, from what I've seen, when he's at his best, Kevin, is when he gets that breaking ball working, especially throwing it for strikes on the hitters as well. Throw and pitch misses inside and a leadoff walk to Caden Trinkle. Not the exact way you want to start it, so already going to see how Eli Davis works around this one. Well, you hit the nail on the head. That breaking ball's nasty, but you got to be ahead. You work it, strike one. That's the most important pitch in baseball, and that's what Eli's been doing. Cowboys already going. These guys get fired up. You like to see it, and when they're winning, they're the loudest team in America, I guarantee you that. Oklahoma State, for me, you know, they are a team that they play with a lot of heart, a lot of energy. They are an exciting bunch that makes it, you know, just a fun afternoon at the ballpark when you get to hear their energy from their dugout as the senior Max Hewitt steps in up here with a runner on first base, soft leadoff over there at first. Executed the sack punt. Davis does not make the play. 
nearly, and you talk about it, Kevin, he's almost a shortstop when he finishes and almost had a beautiful diving play that would have made Maui Ahuna proud. Oh, that would have been on Sports Center, I guarantee that. Look at this, he finishes balanced, almost makes this play. This is a base hit all the way. What an effort right there. Couldn't do any more. And Man, no way Tulomero can get out. He has got great range as a catcher or messenger, but great uh, small ball once again. That 11-run inning, we talked about the catcher's interference, but how big was that drag bunt? I mean, just getting the guys over, and it, that, that's how you play baseball right there. Really good execution. And now even more trophy, Eli Davis, as that one gets in there, finally a first pitch strike as Christian Carnassi on strand steps in. And this is where it gets even more dangerous. Runs on first and second, nobody out. If you're Davis, you probably want to settle down here, just not let this explode into a big inning and just stay within yourself. Another miss down at him, but great block by Tulomero. And I've been really impressed. That's something I've seen Anthony Tulomero really develop on this season, Kevin, is his ability to block those breaking balls in the dirt and really extend his range to not let runners advance on the wild pitch. I'd say he's the most overlooked player on this team. Uh, with Maui out there and Josenberger with the hit streak, I mean, these are all three freshmen at key spots in the order. And Tulomero is the best defensive player I've seen. The guy, teams don't even run on him. I mean, we've seen teams that are just stealing bags on everybody. And he's got the respect already, but you hit the nail on the head. Nothing gets by him. He's a brick wall, and that helps out the pitcher more than anything. 1-1 one, one from Davis. And that one right there, unfortunately, is a little bit of a broadcaster's jinx there. We're in there touting Tulamera's defensibility, and that one tried the backhand, skipped it up. And now it's even more dangerous for the Jayhawks here with a count now 2-1. and one. Runners at second and third, nobody out. Really going to need a bearing down moment here from Eli Davis if he wants to try and not let this inning explode as Oklahoma State has a great opportunity in front of him. 2-1 from Davis, soft little grounder left side and just a misplay over there at third by Messenger. And that is how Oklahoma State's gonna get on the board today. So a defensive miscue from Skyler Messenger and the Cowboys can take an early 1-0 lead. Still nobody out through the first three batters. That's a tough play. It's right in the in-between. You're not in, you're not back, but just a tough hop. And that base runner, he was getting down the line. Even if he makes that play, I don't think he can get a guy at home. But that was definitely the, the option for Messenger. But that's just big-time base running. Look how they got the run. No real hits. That bunt actually is a hit, but the bunt's more demoralizing than anything. They're giving you an out, and they get a, they get a free runner. It's truly, it's on there. You want to try and make them pay if they're going to give you that out on the sack bunt with that one in there for a strike. And circling back to that bunt attempt, Max Hewitt almost made a terrible mistake. You want to get that ball down, get it right into the ground, keep the bat head up. And he popped that one up, and just because Davis wasn't able to make the play, the runner gets on, and now a few more things happen. It's those little things that can pile up into the bigger ones as Oklahoma State now leads. With that one missing a little bit outside there well, I, I for could, Davis. I couldn't be more with you. Eli is a guy that's tough to even bunt, you know, if you pop it up. But what's even more important is the angle. If that ball wasn't perfectly angled down the line, then that might have been a double play ball. It, so the angle actually even more important than, than getting on top. Truly nice little cut there, swing and a miss. So Eli Davis finally really going to get ahead of a batter here. And so he's given up the one run here, but this is where you go into the idea of you don't want to give up the crooked number. You know, if Eli Davis can wiggle out of this only allowing the one run, or you know what, even if it gets to two, it's not the end of the world. But what you want to keep here is, you know, three or four or five and really put your offense behind the eight ball before they've even, you know, towed in the, in the batter's box. Another one spiking there, but... And it looks like Eli Davis now twice has short-armed that ball, trying to really get it in there. Those aren't even getting to home plate. I mean, those, that's a release point right there. The, the yeah. one thing, it's just uh, when he's missing, he's missing down, which is good. But th those balls are just impossible to block. That looked like a pop-up. I think it was up in the air so long. And But what I think about with Davis, last two starts, the wind's been blowing out. He's had almost shutouts with the wind just piling out of here. Today, the wind's kind of swirling, but more blowing in. And his velocity's up. He's at 94 miles an hour. But that's not necessarily a big help. Eli, with that curveball, like you said, Pitching into that wind, that was a nasty pitch. Dialing up 10 strikeouts against TCU. I mean, he's been doing stuff that we haven't seen for quite a while. So, but little guy, but he's got a big heart. Oh, yeah, Eli Davis is one of those guys who, you know, you don't measure them. You know, he might, you might look at him. He not, it doesn't look like, you know, a big-time pitcher here. 
as he issues the walk there still no outs in the inning as Eli Davis is having a little bit of trouble to start but as we said Kevin this is guy you know you look at him only standing 5'8 you know a young guy doesn't look imposing or intimidating but man don't challenge this kid's toughness I have watched over you know over the time here at KU this kid fights with a lot of heart he'll battle you know he's one of those guys who he'll go to the biggest guy in the yard and still try and take him on and fully thinks he can take on anybody at any time and you love to see it. That's that's what you want from your pitcher. You know, it's not a co uh, cocky type thing. It's just when he gets focused, he is locked in. And I think the strength of this team is defense by far. And look at Tio Romero. You, like you said, he's just trying his best to block it. There's another one that just choked that release point, it, it, you know, trying to be a little too fine. What I think of here, one of the best uh, third baseman I've ever played with, Travis Metcalf. He was in the big leagues and uh, quite a while with Texas Rangers. And I remember pitching in the ninth, and big spot, he made an error. The only error I've ever seen him make the whole time. And all I kept thinking was, man, if I could just get him another one and got him one, and he got a double play that next pitch. So same way right here. You could get Messenger another chance. That's your best defender out there. You got to use your defense. You're going to win this game. I would agree with that. We'll see what Kansas does here. Again, bases loaded, nobody out, as Carson McCusker is in here with a 1-0 count. That one missing inside is Davis just, and he, he's had a few of those short arms, Kevin, but he's also not missing, the outside of those short arms, he's not missing that erratic around the zone. It's like he's just a little bit off here on Sunday afternoon. Well, I don't know if you saw the recap from yesterday, but that damage done, every pitch was below the knees. It, it's a tough team to pitch to. Soft little grounder up the middle. KU will probably only be able to, they're going to try and get two, but they cannot. And the high chopper there makes it a little bit difficult, but KU is able to get an out. Runners to the corners, the runner just score. But now you can have a more classic double play setup as well with Ahuna up the middle along with Costantino and see what they're able to do here to again limit the damage at just two runs. Well, good job for McCluster just getting in play. You know, the ball put in play there, you get a run. But for Eli Davis, that's his best pitch of the game. He forced contact, and that's a big-time hitter, got out on his front foot. So uh, that, there's a good sign. First time that not trying to blow up by a guy, but using that guy's uh, big-time uh, offensive ability against him. And Davis, again, just again just a little too fine. Also, you know, you can always make the argument of being squeezed a little bit early on. We have not really seen the zone set, so I wouldn't go so far into the squeeze argument yet. No, well, the thing is, when you're consistent, you start hitting the zone. I've seen Greg Maddox get a foot off the plate because he just pounds it the whole time. So you prove it, you're going to get, they're going to assume it's going to be a strike. So right now, if you're bouncing balls two feet in front of home plate, they're not thinking that the ball's going to be a strike. It almost surprised them to be a strike. It's one of those things where if Davis can start pounding the strikes in a little bit more, get these hitters on their back heels. Right now, it's all Oklahoma State control as Mathis steps in here, and they're the ones on the aggressive, and Eli Davis is on the defensive as he tries to flip this around. And see, right there, that's the first bad swing, and that's even a terrible swing, but more of the off-balance swings I've seen from Oklahoma State here on here as Davis tried to work that one in. And 2-0 count. I mean, that's usually a hitter's count. You think uh, driving the ball and... You look up there, two runs, one hit. I mean, and what's that hit, a bunt? It's not yeah. like he's getting <laughs> rocked. I mean, I'd say that's the last thing that's happening. He's one pitch away from getting out of this. He truly is. The 2-1, missing yet again there is Davis. And I think this one, well, I've seen Tulamero go out once, but I think Davis could benefit from, again, just taking a moment, take that deep breath, recenter yourself. You don't need to throw the ball through the brick wall, something nice and easy. As you said, Kevin, get a roll up the middle, double play, you're out of this inning. Two Lomero's turning into a leader. You want that from your catcher. Another walk for Davis as the bases will be reloaded with one out. One thing I can say there, you know, you don't want to load the bases, but now you have that lefty-lefty matchup. That guy was really swinging the bat well, and here's a guy that can swing it also. Great defender out there in right. He made a plus play. Great arm. Hey, I don't think you want to run on this guy's arm, I'll tell you that much, but might bring him into pitch later if they need to. But. They very they very much might. He has a great strong arm, does Kevin S. Now, the bases are loaded with one down. You don't like seeing the bases loaded, but a benefit looking on the bright side from different angles here. You have a force in any base. Again, the dual play still gets you out of the inning. You're only down two runs, but you rarely see that one hit, two run, and a bases loaded situation. And it can make you frustrated, I would think, if you're Kansas. You might get a little frustrated by the simple fact of, with that one hit, you're letting, you know, you're letting Oklahoma State get a lot of things happening right now. The Cowboys aren't really doing anything outside of just being patient and letting Kansas kind of beat themselves here early. 
Well, when do you think about defenses playing well? Ryan Sear last year, 86 pitches in a complete game. Those guys were ready on every single pitch. Uh, right now, uh, defense is probably not expecting the ball as much as you normally would, and that's what uh, Coach, Pry uh, Coach Graves is getting with. He's like, got to pound that zone. Let's get this lefty-lefty matchup and get out of here because uh, it's hard to play defense when you don't know the ball's coming to you. If you expect it, those guys are nasty. There you very much see that a lot of times there. And you talked about, you know, defense is kind of not being prepared. And that could be a little bit even happened with Skylar Messenger earlier with not a lot of immediate action, a little bit low to sleep there would make him, you know, make a rare mental mistake. But now we'll see if maybe again, pounding the strike some more with Davis, get the defense more engaged and see what happens. And there's a nice first pitch strike. That's the best pitch in baseball right there is a first pitch strike. There's nothing better. That's the best pitch in, uh, for a lefty. That's the bread and butter. Low and away, inside for show. You got to show that against these good hitters. But I mean, that pitch is unhittable. Nothing you can do with that. That's nasty. And Ahuna just misreads it there, was trying to fake out the runner. And two more runs will score for Oklahoma State. Had Ahuna maybe read that immediately, you might have had an inning inning double play. But instead, it's the second hit for Oklahoma State, a single out there and a left center. And it's 4 0 Cowboys. That was kind of sneaky good base running. You know, he's not going to throw behind you at third, but if you wait a little minute, Maui never picked that ball up. He didn't react to it until it pretty much got into the outfield. Those are some big base runners. This is a tall team. They could go play basketball if they wanted to, but I don't think Maui saw that ball at all. He didn't even make a turn for it, didn't know which way to go. And that's kind of fast switch muscle guy. He can get to anything. Yeah, I've seen Maui Ahuna make some tremendous plays out there at Shorten. That may be one of those few times. You've seen him make some great plays. He's hit really well at the plate and, again, played really well defensively. But we got to remember, he's still a freshman, still very young, as the bunt was shown there. And, again, a nice block from Anthony Tulomero. You know, Ahuna's still young. We'll make mistakes. But I'm with you. He just didn't even seem to see that until it got to the outfield. This is what uh, Josh Holliday and Coach Price are great at this uh, small ball and long ball. And, that was a safety squeeze right there. That didn't look like anything special, not a suicide squeeze, but that's the safest play in baseball. If you get a bunt down first, easy run, and a guy into scoring position, that, that's a smart move from a coach trying to get something done from the bottom of his order. It's one of the things you, you know, when a team can play both those things, when they can both do the long ball, crush a ball to the gap, but then those intelligent little crafty plays, you know, those plays you're taught in Little League, something like a safety squeeze and things like that. It's just intelligent play. As that one's ripped through the left side, another run will score for Oklahoma State. And now they've taken a 5 nothing lead. There's still only one down in this inning. As the Cowboys will send their ninth batter to the plate in the form of Alex Garcia. And I'm not saying the safety squeeze was everything, but I know the infielders would play more shallow. You know, no way you're going to range up after a guy shows that. So, I mean, the small ball leads to big ball. I don't know what's more demoralizing, giving up bombs or giving up that kind of stuff. It's just uh, so hard. And if a team can do both, that's truly a tough lineup to pitch to. And with that, we're going to get a pitching change here in the first inning as Eli Davis is only able to get one out. We'll see what happens. It's 5 nothing. Oklahoma State leads here as we'll get a pitching change. You're listening to Big 12 Baseball here on ESPN+. Plus. Welcome back to Oakland Ballpark. Brian Haney and Kevin Wheeler with you. Our thanks to Fulton Caster for the first inning play-by-play -play or first out play-by-play. -play. Cowboys jumping on the Jayhawks early here. 5 nothing. I guess if there is a silver lining, Kevin Wheeler, the guy you're bringing in to save the day after a atypical start from Eli Davis is typically a Friday night ace for you that they wanted to move to a weekend reliever type role late game scenario they said that was really more of his mental makeup but in an emergency situation this is what he's done for the last three years going the long distances from the very onset so Ryan Sear a great ace in the hole you might say for Kansas in this emergency situation Man, Brian, I missed you. That sunny side, you look at things, I would miss that right here. I, I like it. Think about if Sear pitched Friday night, you think you're going to have a chance to bring him back today? No way. This is such a valuable guy. You think about not being in the rotation and it's a demotion? No way. That's the biggest promotion you can get. Sear, since that, he's already pitched in four games. So this is a guy you want, and I like what you're thinking. Alex Garcia digs in from the right-hand side. Cowboys looking to build on already a five-run lead. Of course, we saw the 11-run sixth inning yesterday, so they have had some serious crooked number innings in the first 10 innings of this series. A program that has had some injuries to their starting rotation, and yet the bats just keep swinging it. 
Breaking ball down, 2-0 and oh to Garcia. One thing I've noticed today with the wind, not with how the ball's being affected, but Eli's been used to pitching into uh, the wind blowing out. Today, he had 94-mile-an-hour stuff, and it was tough for him to even get it out. So he, it's kind of a weird day, but it kind of takes away a little bit of movement. And you got to have good balance up there on the, on the bump. Garcia, a 221 hitter. He does have three home runs, though, from the nine hole. And now 3-0. You'd hate to walk the bases loaded with the top of the order coming up next. But Sear trying to find the zone. On his first three pitches here, 3-0 and to Garcia. And he walked him on four pitches. And the first inning of frustration continues for Kansas. As now the bases are loaded and back to Trinkle at the top. Brian, this lineup's just getting better. I've seen those same guys, uh, Garcia and Cavanis, they, they batting in the three, four hole, five hole. Yeah, I mean, years ago, these guys are batting seven and nine right now. These guys, pretty, pretty good lineup all the way through. Trankel digging in, hitting 270. As the first pitch comes in low, five straight balls from Ryan Sear. He walked and scored earlier this inning. And though the runs still have a long ways to go, you start to have flashbacks of last night, Kevin Wheeler, when we saw 15 Cowboys come to the bat. This is the 10th Cowboy hitter of the first inning. This is the craziest sport because I, I can't imagine a team hitting a guy harder. That lefty yesterday was nasty. Jayhawks just roped the ball. Every out was at the warning track. Yeah, he couldn't have hit any better. And this inning here, already five runs, could be a huge inning. They haven't really hit the ball hard yet. I mean, nothing uh, intimidating by any means. A foul ball finally gives Sear a strike. Here's the 1-1, one -one, blown by him. And a ball of two strikes now, Sear facing off with Trinkle. Hoping to get him to roll one over into the teeth of that terrific Kansas infield defense. How about that at bat last night? We got the catcher's interference. Uh, that was some kind of game-changing type play. You never see that. But those two strikes just chopping straight down. Ball downstairs, two and two. Yeah, that opened the floodgates. Kansas thought it had a double play. Instead, catcher's interference was the ruling. Everybody was safe. No outs. Runner scored. And from there, as we said, 11 more guys would come up in the inning. This one hit well up the middle and on through. And that will plate another OSU run. They're going to send two runners home as Josenberger waited on the throw. It'll be a two RBI single for Trankel. And just like that, it is 7-0 OSU. Aggressive base running as they went ahead and sent him anyway. As the throw took a little while to get in. And with that, now a seven spot hung on the Jayhawks. Great two-strike swing once, once again, weighted back on the changeup this time. And like you said, I don't think this is a straight steel type team, but they're the best team I've seen at first to third, second to home type action. Got some big boys, and once they get those stri striding out, can really run kind of deceptive speed on this team. So now first and second, still just one out. Max Hewitt's. Cowboy catcher digging in next. He also plays second base where we'll see him today. A versatile guy. Hitting at 285 with four home runs and 36 RBI. He singled and scored earlier this inning. On a bunt that uh, Eli Davis made a diving effort for. Got a base hit. It's this one well past the dive of Cosentino. They will hold the runner this time at third base. So no RBI for Hewitt. But the hit parade continues, and the base is now loaded for the best hitter, arguably in America, Christian Encarnacion Strand. You say you see something different every time you come to the park. That's two days in a row, one time in the order that a guy gets a base hit on a bunt he's trying to sacrifice, and a base hit as well. And last night was a grand slam. This is just a single. But that, those are two, that rarely happens. And, Bump base hit led the way to uh, infield in and po poking it through. Encarnacion Strand skies this one right side of the infield. What a gift this would be. Casatino's got it. 
And a guy that averaged two RBI per game in the month of April and was the national hitter of the month just popped up with the bases loaded and only one out. Like manna from heaven, that ball falls into Costantino's glove. He just trying to do a little too much, and how, how big time is that player? There's so many scouts here today for batting practice. They were all watching that guy. That's just one of the guys they're watching, but, I mean, that, that's a top-tier type player. He's had uh, one of the best seasons uh, I've ever seen over there at third base, and these are some great third basemen we have here this weekend. We're talking about a player with a slugging percentage of 770. You think about all the scenarios that could have happened in that spot right there. An infield pop-up in which no one advances. Probability was probably less than 2%, and yet that's what Sear got him to do. That guy and Brett Vosick, their average went up in Big, play, big 12 play. I've never seen that before, but they're, they're killing Big 12 pitching. There's a called strike to Jake Thompson, who walked his first time up. Ball and a strike. This for the Cowboys, their 13th batter of the inning. Base is still loaded. 7-0 the score. Kansas already on its second pitcher. Breaking ball misses outside. Thompson at 343. Three homers, 21 RBI. He scored 15 times. His on-base percentage, 481. We saw it here last night. Three straight hits, including two RBI swings for Thompson. And we referenced it a couple of times when you're hitting behind Encarnacion Strand and he's getting all the ink, all the headlines. Folks forget how good this guy actually is. But 481 on base percentage is just fantastic. You, you couldn't have put it more on the head. When I think about a good hitter, first thing, who's hitting behind him? You know, and this guy's a professional type hitter. He'll give you a good at bat. So something about that number 17, they just swing the bat well, I'll tell you that. But it, couldn't it be a more competitive at bat? Guy's batting about 350, got power to all fields, and he's as good as it gets from the left side right in the middle of the order. You thinking Chris Bryant with that reference? Uh, Maui, Chris Bryant, uh, Sohei, Atani. There you go. The 3 2. Lifted down the line to left field. If it's fair, that could clear the bases, but it's just foul. Thankfully, mercifully for Kansas, it's foul by about a foot. And three and two on Jake Thompson. As his eyes got real big, like he may have just cleaned the bases. That ball was struck, just kept tailing over there. And where Brett Vosick is playing against a lefty, no way. That's probably a triple, but that's just a really good aggressive hack. Wow. Yeah, a double it would have been, but that ball is accelerating off there. That's a good two strike swing. And we got quite a battle right here. It's still early in the game, but I mean, it, it, this game's not nearly over. If you can minimize it to seven, sounds crazy, but that's actually a, a big win the way this inning's going. And talk about 17, uh, it's so, hey, Atani, that, that's why I like that number. I've never seen a hitter get that foot down earlier and still have that kind of power. That, that guy's the best, the best in the game. The 3 2 as the runners go. Bounced right side. Can Costantino get there? Yes. Knocks it down. Fires, but not in time. And they're going to send two Cowboys home. The aggressive base running continues as Trankel comes in to score as well, in addition to Garcia. And so on an infield single, they score two. Of course, on a 3 2 pitch, they were off and running anyway. Costantino doing all he could to smother it. But the Cowboys, with the pedal to the metal, now take a 9-0 lead. You hit it with the aggressive, but it's not just crazy aggressive. That's two outs. Really smart baseball right there. And if you go, you're forcing a, a play at the plate. And no way you're going to be able to make that. Great play by Constantino just to keep that ball in the infield. First pitch strike to McCusker. He may have had the biggest defensive play of this series to this point. A rob job on Blaine Ray at the top of the wall that could have been two, maybe three runs if it gets over the wall. And it really swung the momentum in the middle innings yesterday, preceding the 11-run sixth that the Cowboys posted. And that's not to say the 11 runs wouldn't have happened if Ray's able to double or homer there, but the point is momentum was wearing crimson and blue until that play and then the big offensive onslaught that ensued. 
But who would have thunk it after 11 in the sixth last night, nine in the first here today. A ball and two strikes now to McCusker. Yeah, this is something else. Two of the biggest innings. We've already seen the Jayhawks with an eight run inning to get that rivalry battle going again with Missouri. And these are two of the biggest crooked numbers. This is getting to a spot where it's almost not a crooked number anymore. Uh, it's so crooked. Seven runs on the tab of Davis, two on Sear. This one skied within the infield. And so the two outs the Sear will get will both be pop ups to Cosentino. Catch made, inning finally over. But nine runs on six hits. The Cowboys with an emphatic statement right out the gate. Nine nothing Oklahoma State. Yes, you read that right. It's not a typo. The Cowboys, after 11 in the sixth last night, are up for nine more in the first today. And just like that, the Jayhawks find themselves in a mighty hole. But here's the lineup they'll try to climb out of it with. Dylan Ditzenberger batting leadoff for the second consecutive day as they move Tavian Josenberger into the three hole. We'll see Tom Lichty as the DH. Jack Wagner still in right field as Casey Burnham tries to work his way back. He came back briefly last weekend, but still not fully healthy with the hamstring for the Kansas right fielder. But that's Ditzenberger at first, and that's the lineup card of head coach Rich Price as they get set to face off against Justin Campbell. And Campbell can't believe the run support he's got here. 2.78 ERA. This will be his 10th start and 11th appearance of the season. Opponents hitting just 228 against him. But rarely do you ever get to start with a nine-run cushion. And that's the case for Campbell tonight. You're a former Friday night starter, Kevin Wheeler. What was the most run support you ever took the mound with before you threw your first pitch? Here's Ditzenberger fouling one off. 0-1. Ditzenberger hitting at 281 with an on-base percentage of 331. Can you recall? Oh, yeah, the most runs you ever see. I remember a lot of 2-3, two, 3-4 three, three, games, even 2-1 uh, to one a lot of times and one zip every once in a while. But uh, I remember one against uh, University of Texas, 10-1. to one, and We got up on him and didn't hear a peep from him the rest of the game. It was, uh, it was just a beautiful sound out there. But I got a couple of doubles that game and it, it pitched the whole thing. But it was... Uh, it was one of the most fun you can have. That team's a College World Series champion type team. I uh, know all those players, and that, that was nice for a Friday. You never see that. But here's a freshman that's getting, he doesn't need much help. He has outstanding numbers, great win loss, and way more strikeouts than innings pitched. Ditzenberger lines one right at Encarnacion Strand, and the play is made for out number one. Kansas really missing Nolan Metcalf. And Ditzenberger's done a terrific job defensively at first and obviously has hit well against the right-handers. But when you think about Burnham and Metcalf out for the last month, can you put into words what those absences have meant to this Kansas team that's still mighty talented? But, man, those are two pretty important straws to stir the drink. Yeah, it's hard to, hard to compare what, what that is. It's like... Uh... I don't know, losing like Babe Ruth and uh, Ricky <laughs> Henderson or something. I don't know. But most power on the team. I mean, guys just stop what they're doing and Metcalf Stick and BP, the way the sound it comes off his bat. And Casey Burnham, I don't care what team the uh, Jayhawks are playing this year. That's the fastest guy on the ball field at both teams. So, I mean, those are two big-time weapons. They're not complete players where they're going to just carry you, but what additions they would make to complement what they already have going. Maui Yahuna fouling one off to go down one and two. Ahuna on the season now hitting at 297. No homers, 18 RBI. Cowboy fans don't want to hear about it as they deal with Nolan McClain's back and talk about Parker Scott, Robleski. I mean, they've had so many injuries to pitching, as we saw last night, a reliever being pressed into his second start of the year. And what a great job turned in over the course of seven-plus innings out of Mitchell Stone. So both these teams try to overcome injury hurdles. But well, down nine, you sure would love to have the mighty Casey and Metcalf in the mix. There's a called third strike, and they will ring up and sit down Ahuna. Tremendous start on the mound for Justin Campbell. Well, I think Maui had the best swing of the night last night, and you could see how they're defending him today. But with two strikes, wow. I don't know if that's on the plate or not. It's just a tough one to even foul off. He's a tall pitcher. He gets a little bit of movement on the ball as well over the top. And 
with two strikes. That's nasty, but I really like what they did in left field. He was guarding that line. First pitch swinging is Josenberger. He promptly grounds to first. The race to the bag is won by the Cowboys, and that will retire the side here in the first. Nice place made over there by Garcia. 9-0 Cowboys, one inning deep. Welcome back to Hoakland Ballpark, 9-0 Cowboys. Oklahoma State erupting for nine runs in the first inning, knocking the starter Eli Davis from the game. Jayhawks had to turn to Ryan Sear. Sear able to get the final two outs of that first inning, but tagged with a couple of runs on his own tab. Neither earned. Seven earned runs on the line of Eli Davis, who been pitching so well of late. You hate to see his ERA balloon to six. Here's Mathis grounding towards short. Nice play by Ahuna across in time for out number one. Take a look at this pitch, Brian. We're talking about summer ball and wood bat. This bat would be in a million pieces right here. Jam job. Look at that movement. But Maui, his feet are fantastic on the run. That's a big time play against a good runner. That's how you play ball. I asked you last night about what's the message in the Kansas dugout when you give up 11 in an inning, and I imagine it's similar giving up nine, especially when you've got the whole game in front of you offensively. But what's the message from a Cowboy perspective in the hopes that your guys don't take their foot off the gas and get a little complacent, fat and happy up nine? What's being said in Coach Holiday's dugout right now, whether it's Josh Matt or Robin Ventura, talking to these guys about staying aggressive and staying locked in despite a nine-run lead. Well, I think that's what Oklahoma State is known for, just keeping your foot on the throat, and that's a sign of a good team. I mean, Jayhawks, they can do everything as a lineup, but you look at a team like this, and this is a team that gets greedy. They get runners out there, and they're moving up two bases every single time, but they're not satisfied at all. And Hey, that comes from, I mean, Gary Ward type hitting with uh, Josh Holiday. You, you wouldn't believe those lineups, Ryan. They're, they're score 15 runs in the College World Series and then run out a whole new lineup the next day. Uh, lefty righty matchup. I mean, that, that's what they do just uh, all the way through the lineup. Swing and a miss, and Ryan Sear finding a groove here as he makes quick work that time for out number two of Cabinus. That's how you pitch right there, get a good hitter's eyes changing above the belt. And that is just Louisiana Bayou right there. That's a good hitter that's uh, really got blown by him because of a little bit of extra help in the wind, but great location up top. So two quick outs in the inning. Morrill coming up next. One for one on the day is Morrill. Part of that big nine-run first inning. He had an RBI single and a run scored. Two and zero quickly to Morrill, and I like what you're thinking with Sear. I know the game's not where you want it, but he's actually a fly ball pitcher. You think sinker, slider, get some grounders, but he gets a lot of fly balls, got some pop ups, and with that wind blowing in, good guy to bring in the game. Bouncing ball past the diving glove of Messenger, and a hot day continues for Morrill. Already two for two, already a multi hit game, and we're just in the top of the seconds. Before either one of those hits, he did a fake safety squeeze. You just put that in the mind, and you know you're going to play a little more shallow against a guy who can show that kind of, and, and he's hit two ground balls. That I'm not saying they would have been outs, but it definitely have an infield that's closer to him. What a weekend for Morrill. Comes in hitting 208, and his first four plate appearances last night, he gets on base every single time with a single and three walks, and then two hits already today. And really, you look at it, it's been the bottom of the order that, that's gotten to Kansas in some key moments. Last night, the nine-hole hitting second baseman, Matt Golda, batting less than the Mendoza line, hits a grand slam to fuel that 11-run sixth. Now Garcia, he swings and finds a gap in right center. Josenberger won't get there. On one hop, it's off the bottom of the wall. They will send the runner home, Morrill, and he will score from first base. 10-0 Oklahoma State. The hit parade continues for the Cowboys. Great inside-out swing. Ball just missed it a little bit over the plate, rides back, and that is the power zone of a big righty. Up, out, over the plate. Really wore out that right center gap for extra base hit again, and like you mentioned, really good aggressive base running, looking for extra bases. Now back to the top of the order again. 
third at bat already for Trankel today, and here we are in the top of the second. First pitch is a ball outside, 79 on the gun. Thus far this afternoon, we've seen Caden score a couple of runs, drive in a couple of runs, a walk and a hit, setting the table very well. Center fielder for the Pokes. Breaking ball misses a little bit off the edge. 2-0 to Caden Trankel. Yeah, Brian, I'd say a big strength both these teams. They have some depth. So you said, what, what are they working on? I mean, these are still guys fighting for jobs. See a guy hit a grand slam yesterday that's not in the game today. Saw that guy out there at second who's batting close to, what, nine hole? It, we've seen him at three, four, five in the order. It, uh, guys are still fighting for that, and that's just competitive. And a lot, a lot of good ball players probably still want to get in this ball game. Great point. And they may get their chance if this continues. 10-0 Cowboys. Sear try to limit the damage to just a single run. After nine in the first. Two and one. Now three and one. Sear did a great job last inning in getting their most dangerous hitter, Encarnacion Strand, to pop up with the bases loaded. And was off and rolling to start this inning. Prior to the eight and nine hole hitters barreling up twice to drive in a run and send the top of the order up here in the third. Foul ball runs the count full, though. Well, you can see how uh, Trinkle would get a uh, catcher's interference with two strikes. He gets way back, way back in the back of the box, chops straight down, lets the ball travel. Another shot toward the gap. Can Josenberger get there? No, it's over his head and off the base of the wall. 11-0 Oklahoma State. As Garcia comes in to score. And Trankel coming up with an RBI double with two outs. Three consecutive hits by the Pokes. Another good-looking freshman. How about this swing? Low and away. That's not a bad pitch at all. But with two strikes, you couldn't get a better uh, swing. Just getting the ball put into play. Hit hard and... R really good at bat. Big swing by Trankel, who's certainly been good in league play, hitting at 333, second best on this team against conference pitching. And he's backed that up today, already three for three and getting on base with two hits. Now Max Hewitt up to 295 after a two for two start to his day. What did you think of Hewitt's at catcher compared to second base, and what does it mean to have that kind of versatility? Yeah, it kind of reminds me of Robbie Price, or Rhino Price, Ryan, where uh, he can play second, play third, catcher. I've seen him at all three of those, and if you have a big-time bat, big-time power, you can do that. That's a great utility player. Uh, I, th I think he's a really good ball player, and what he did in the first inning has set the tone to this game. He was sacrificing down third, got under it a little bit because of Eli's heat, but the angle was perfect and just enough uh, to get a team going. Small ball leads to some uh, long ball. A foul straight back. Two and one to Hewitt. But when you talk about what a scout's looking for, I mean, middle infield, that's great. But if you can play behind the plate, a catcher and swing a bit like that from the left side, that's uh, that's probably what they're looking for mainly, but it, what a weapon e either way. It, you can't really teach that as a catcher, that, that kind of swing. There's one nibbling at the inside black of the plates. Raising up to get out of the way of it was Hewitt, and yet it's a called strike two. Yeah, he really dives in. If you notice with his front foot, he'll start a little open, but by the time that front foot gets down, look at this, choking up three inches off the bottom of that bat. Looks like Barry Bonds, perfect. But by the time that front foot's almost just covering home plate and he's just gonna dive right into it, keep that shoulder closed. Hits it hard and well up the middle. And OSU continues to pour it on. 12 nothing now Cowboys. This all coming with two outs. Back to back to back to back hits. Just when you thought Kansas had a bounce back inning, 
They rally for three runs with two outs. Those last two swings with two strikes from the leadoff and two-hole hitter, that's why they're hitting right there. Those are B-hacks. Those aren't guys trying to jack a home run, but they, they just getting the job done, choking up three inches, covering the plate, and got, hitting the ball on a rope. Single, double, double, single. All with two outs for OSU. And now you have to face arguably the nation's hottest hitter. I don't know what's more demoralizing, those B-hacks like that that'll just kill you once you get two strikes, or an A-hack, you know, a guy that can just lose one, three, uh, three runs with just one swing. They both hurt in a different way. This is a lineup that can do it both. They've already proven they can do it uh, both ways, and toughest lineup to pitch to. Bouncer up the middle. This should end the inning. Casatino takes it himself, steps on the bag, and that will retire the side. But three runs on four hits, all with two outs. 12-0 Oklahoma State. Skyler Messenger to lead things off for Kansas. Jayhawks find themselves down a dozen, but will bring up three, four, and five, or rather four, five, and six this inning in a new-look lineup in which Josenberger's now hitting third once the hitting streak came to an end. And you move Messenger into that cleanup spot. and Got some veterans here in the middle of the order, including Skyler. But with the shift on, he hits right into the shift. And Hewitt's got it. Four to three on the putout. Max Hewitt to first baseman Alex Garcia. Just like uh, at the bottom of this inning, getting out of a jam with that shift. Constantino, now Hewitt again, perfectly placed. Those are hard hit balls, usually base hits up the middle. Vasek, who homered last night, sees the first pitch strike come in 0-1. Vasek with his second home run on the season. It was a solo shot to lead off the second inning. And there's a big fly with one out in this second inning. The ballpark will keep it in, the wind knocking it down, and that's a can of corn in right field by Cabanis for out number two. Yeah, I know you were worried about the scoreboard after Vasek just took a pounding to it yesterday, but <laughs> I thought he hit a hole right through the brick wall. That's how hard that ball was hit, but that was just one run, you know, and that was a great swing, about the best swing I've seen all year. But that's kind of how the game went. Uh, they have a 15 at bat uh, inning, and Vasa gets a ball like that, and that, that's pretty much all you can score. It's just a crazy game, and just got to keep playing hard. Now, Anthony Tulamero sees a first pitch strike. One and one. I wasn't too worried about the scoreboard because, like you said, it hit the brick, but I've seen that before where it hits the video portion of the board, the actual screen, and all of a sudden. It's pixelated, and there's like a black box there where the ball hits. And uh, that's not a cheap fix. So thankfully, the rocket shot by Vasek hit the brick structure that supports that screen. But man, did it leave the yard in a hurry. Swing and a miss. Down goes to Lamero. And quick work of the Jayhawks by Justin Campbell. A one, two, three second. It is 12 to nothing, Oklahoma State. Steve Wasilewski has come on for Kansas. The Jayhawks with their third pitcher of the day. Eli Davis lasting just one out. Charles with seven runs, six of which were earned. Sear goes an inning and two-thirds. Throws 48 pitches in that span. Five runs allowed, three earned. And now Wasilewski, who was the starting pitcher on Wednesday in the Jayhawks win over Missouri State. What do you like about Wash? Well, here's a spot right here for Wash. He, he's a starter all year. He's getting in strength in his legs, and this guy's not afraid to pitch inside. That's what I really like about him. Uh, but he can work outside as well. Breaking balls, getting better, and he does a good job lefty on lefty matchup, but very good job controlling the running game on first base. And uh, what he needs to do is think about he's starting this ball game. What he needs to give up is one run, seven hits, and that finish this game off. And that, that's what the Jayhawks gave up yesterday. If they could do that, it would be a whole new ball game. Foul ball on the first pitch to Thompson as the cleanup man's already up for a third time in three innings. Wasilewski in the midweek went four solid innings of one run ball. It was an unearned run. Zero walks, four hits, a whip of one. And the bullpen was excellent behind him. Vander High, Hewlett, Sear, and Ulane. 
to close out that 3-1 win over Missouri State. That was the final home midweek game of the season. So no midweek game coming up prior to Kansas State next week. So Jayhawks able to unload a lot of arms here the next two days if they need to, including a guy that might have drawn a midweek start had there been a Tuesday-Wednesday type matchup. Great point, and I'm happy you said the word Vander High. That guy, what he did yesterday, holy moly, he's going to be a good one, and his ERA is one of the best in the Big 12. So Jams him this time. Little nubber with some spin on it. Wasilewski waits for the bounce and then flips underhand style to get Thompson. It's a big bat to get to hit it about 20 feet, and Wasilewski fields his position nicely. Yeah, for the cleanup, we better pick the thumbs up. I think he left him up there. That uh, What a jam job. I would like to see that with a wood bat. That's what I like about Wasilewski. He's not going to blow it by you, but he just shattered that bat if that's a wood bat. It was closer to hitting it off his fingers than it was the barrel right there. That's uh, And you think about it, why? He was ahead. 0-2 count, working ahead. How much better does that make you as a pitcher? Eli has way better velocity, but he was 2-0. Makes you hittable. And good job for Wasilewski coming into a clean inning and just uh, turn it into his game. 12-0 Cowboys. Let's see if Wasilewski can keep it going and start posting some zeros to allow the offense to inch their way back in it. The last inning started well for Sear with the first two outs quickly prior to four consecutive Cowboy hits, including two doubles and ultimately three runs. McCusker gives this one a ride toward deep right field. Wagner going back. Has room, has time, makes the play for out number two. And it was just the way you can look at things, it might think, oh, lost Eli, lost Sear, two of your best pitchers. If you think about it, either one of those guys or Everett Hazelwood could start tomorrow. You know, and uh, what a weapon, like you said, uh, for, for Sear being able to do all those different things. Now Brock Mathis. Mathis catching today. Swings on the first pitch and hits it foul back toward Allen Fieldhouse out of play. Mathis, a junior on this Cowboy team out of Fairfield, Ohio. LSU, Northwest Florida State Junior College. He's taken quite a route to wind up in Stillwater. Oh for 1 with a walk and a run. He, he hits with that LSU style, especially for a catcher. Seven bombs for a catcher, and he's not even playing every day by any means. And most of the time he is, but he's a big-time power bat at the bottom of this order. This is 30th start. He golfs this one down the line, left field side. It's got plenty of distance, but is hooking foul. And a very long second strike on Brock Mathis. That one may roll across Naismith Drive. That's pretty good baseball name, I think Brock Mathis. That sounds like a ball player pretty much, but if you got a catcher that can hit for extra base hit, power like that, just a total weapon. Really good lineup all the way through. Power and speed. Two and two now to Mathis. Jayhawks looking for their first clean inning defensively. After nine in the first, three in the second. Swung on and missed, he got him. And Steve Wasilewski with an excellent first inning on the mound today. 12-0, Oklahoma State leads it. Kansas will try to get the bats going when we come back on ESPN+. 12-0, Oklahoma State. The Cowboys on the heels of a blowout victory last night in which they had 11 in one inning and wound up winning at 13 to 4. Picked up where they left off today. Nine in the first to lift the Kansas starter, Eli Davis, after just one out. And then obviously three more off of Sear from there. And that was in the second inning. Two more on Sears tab, still in the first. So Kansas expending a lot of pitches and pitchers early, but you got seven offensive innings to go. I know it's a mountain to climb, but there's still time for a Kansas team that was hitting the ball awfully hard yesterday, Kevin Wheeler. You just got to take it one plate appearance at a time. Here's Lichty leading off with a flare towards center. But the play will be made. A nice running catch by Trankel out there. 
One up and one quickly down. Yeah, usually you're thinking, yeah, let's cut this uh, lead in half. But you do that, that's a heck of an inning right now. You put up a six spot, do that, that'd be something special. But you're exactly right. What a good defensive play once again. Lichty hitting the ball hard all the time and nothing more you can ask for. Competitive at bat, that's how you want to hit the ball. James Cosentino up there next. First pitch strike to Cosentino. What do you suppose Cosentino and Vasek are feeling as he grounds this one toward first base? Easy play by Garcia as he steps on the bag. 3U in your score sheet. But for Cosentino and Vasek, we referenced it last night. They spent half a decade here at the friendly confines of Oakland Ballpark, and now they can count their remaining home games on one hand. Did it ever start to get nostalgic for you as you headed down the stretch, or do you not realize it until it's over and it's behind you that you're playing your last two weekends at home? Yeah, it, it hits you right when you hit the clubhouse after the last game. And for me, I never thought it was going to be the last game, you know, especially against the biggest rival we have. You know, that's not what I was thinking at all. So I remember that like yesterday, but. I couldn't be more happy with the way I finished things here and then finished things out at Brooktown just with the last at bats I took. So that's a good feeling. And I remember the best ball player I played with, Casey Spanish, he, he just sitting on the field and just upset. And that guy couldn't have had a better, better year. He's in oppo bombs all year. And swing and a miss by Jack Wagner, and he'll go down quickly. As if Justin Campbell wasn't good enough already, he's got a 12 run cushion and is absolutely dealing here today. Twelve nothing Oklahoma State as we move on to the fourth inning. Cowboys with 12 runs on 10 hits. The big damage coming in the first. Nine runs on six hits. Steve Wasilewski though helped Kansas hang a zero on the board last inning, and he'll try to do the same here. Again, still time to chip your way back into this thing, but you can't allow any more damage on the deficit. The margin for error is next to nil. As Cabanus leads things off and laces one towards center, but right at Josenberger, who takes a circular route to haul it in for out number one. Have you ever seen anything like this, Brian, going into the fourth inning? You got guys getting ready to get up onto their fourth at bat. And then for the Jayhawks, you got a couple guys that haven't even seen the plate yet. Don't even know if it's going to be a good game yet or not. And these guys are already having a day. It is just never seen the at bats more lopsided. It's a great point. I mean, as impressive as Oklahoma State has been at the bat, Justin Campbell's been just as good on the mound. And 12-run cushion or not, and again, he had a nine-run lead after one before he even took the mound. He's been outstanding. How much of a factor is that, though, in taking a deep breath, knowing you've got some breathing room? Because he just has been in fuego ever since his first pitch. Well, this is how good he's been. I, I don't remember if we even introduced him. He's just been dealing like pretty much nine pitches, strikeouts, but quick. I mean, tempo, that's what you want. And especially with that lead, like you said, that's you always want to force contact, make your defense work. But especially in this situation, the only thing that can really hurt you is base runners, base on balls. You just want to attack that zone, see how far you can hit it. The wind's blowing in today. Uh, you can put it on a tee and it's not going to go out of this ballpark. So just smart pitching. Justin Campbell trying to go Wade Miley on these Jayhawks. A no-hitter through three thus far. Miley didn't get any run support till late. It's a bouncing ball foul. Four no-hitters already in the big leagues this year. One of them was a seven-inning no-hitter by Madison Bumgarner. I don't know how you feel about that historically, now that we're having all these seven-inning double-headers in the bigs. But uh, still, four no-hitters by May the 7th is pretty unheard of. I had one uh, seven inning one hitter in Hawaii, my first ever start, actually. Uh, so I count that. That's fine. <laughs> I'll take that. But what I was really thinking of the other day, you mentioned that you said Baltimore Orioles had a no hitter. And it just kind of struck me weird. I was like, I have never heard those words uh, in the same sentence before. Not even close to that. And the guy who threw it, he was just happy to get to the eighth inning. That was his goal. He's never pitched past the seventh inning. It's a different uh, baseball now where guys aren't going that whole game unless they have a no hitter opportunity. And something weird happened with that with that guy. And it was a crazy story with that last one for the Orioles. Fly ball will reach the bullpen area 
out of play. Three and two to Morrill, who's been on base six times already this series and raised his batting average 22 points from where he started the weekend. You're talking about John Means, who's a Fort Scott Community College, Edgerton High School guy from just down the road, right. Gardner Edgerton. But you think about it, it was a no-hitter, but you know what, it also it should have been a perfect game. How many of those have happened? Almost none, but he was one ball getting by a catcher on a strike three from a perfect game. and It was a wild pitch, wasn't it? It was a wild pitch. It, it would have been pass ball. Through. I don't know what you call it, but uh, strikeouts, what you call it. <laughs> Morrill just continues to rake. He's going for two bags here on a one-out stand-up double, and he'll get in safely. Three for three today after being on base four times yesterday. What a weekend for Houston Morrill. Wow, what a swing. Inside out, this is how you hit a lefty right here. If you try to pull that ball, that's a weak rollover ground ball. That's nothing where you're overpowering somebody, but just smart baseball. Those hands are inside. Uh, hands get to the ball before the barrel does, and it's just a compact stroke. What I really like about Morrill, not so much defense, offense, but he can run. The guy is a good base runner. So Morrill down at second, Alex Garcia coming up next. And you look at it, Morrill's now three for three today. Garcia is one for one with a walk. They are five for five in the eight and nine spot at getting on base. And then you have all that danger at the top of the order. This is why Oklahoma State has put on an offensive clinic these first two games of the weekend. Well, Brian, you mentioned that guy for uh, memes for, uh, from Edgerton here, got the no-hitter. And that night after you talked about that, it was a big hockey fight night or whatever. But I, I looked in my back seat, and something was jingling around. It was a signed baseball that I forgot I even had in there. And it said, uh, to Kevin, best wishes, Jim Palmer. <laughs> and that was the last guy to throw a no-hitter. It was a guy I loved. but uh, uh, For the Orioles. For Orioles. Just yeah. got to meet him uh, in Arizona, a big-time golfer. But... I mean, that's a, 1969, I think, is when that happened. This uh, tells you something. Last time Orioles have done something like that. You're telling me that I, was rolling around in your back seats? It was bugging me. It, it was bugging Hall me. Of Fame I, 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 it was bugging me. I don't know. I was like, what's that sound? And it was just with a bucket of balls that I didn't know it was mixed in there, like, honestly. There's a rope by Garcia. If it's fair, it's got a chance to be a double, and it is a fair ball. It'll bounce up and rattle around in the corner. Another Cowboy run will score. They've now scored in three of the first four innings. And back-to-back -back doubles for the eight and nine hole hitters, Morrill and Garcia. If you move those two guys to three, four in the order, you think you'd probably still be all right. You know, I mean, most teams would really like that. That's uh, guys who have been up there. I mean, that's a big-time hitter, and that ball just found it, found the eyes. It's hard to catch it down that line. You have to stay inside it to keep it from hook and foul. 13 runs on 12 hits now for Oklahoma State. Caden Trinkle coming up there next. Seen plenty of him already. This is his fourth at bat, and we're one out deep in the fourth inning. You look at his line so far today. A couple of runs, a couple of hits, a walk, three RBI from the leadoff spot. Thirteen to nothing Oklahoma State. We referenced two years ago when they came here. They had a huge Friday outburst on a day when the wind was blowing out. And what was so impressive about the hitting display they put forth that day was really what followed it the next two days for Kansas. It was a 27 to six route by the Pokes on Friday. But KU comes back to win a pair of one run games on Saturday and Sunday, five, four and seven, six. And we referenced that last night for our Kansas viewers, hoping that a bounce back would come today. The Cowboys have had other ideas. Trinkle hits this one out towards second base. Casatino's got to hurry with the speedy Trinkle flying down the line, but gets the second out, four to three. And Garcia moves 90 feet away now to third base with that, two outs in the inning. That's a great point, Brian, and that just tells you about Coach Price. He's getting guys that 
are even moving to, uh, past the program, both these teams going in. I remember that series like yesterday. A guy got ripped. It's a uh, six-round draft pick, but one of the best players I've seen. And Jayhawks need a guy going to be pitching with the Red Sox this year to, to get that next win. And Ditz over at first, two swings of the bat. He's, get, he's got a nickname because of that series. Big hits, Ditz, indeed. But uh, I, what I think of is Garcia. That 26 to 1, he was batting cleanup. It was 4 or 5. Now he's batting 9 hole. This is a better lineup. So the pitcher of record that day in the 27 to 6 game, the starter was actually Ryan Sear. What makes that amazing is his next home start was the brilliant 86 pitch complete game versus Texas. Here's a flare toward the gap in left center, but Vasek on the run will make the catch, and that will retire the side. But back-to-back -back doubles put another run on the board. Now 13 to nothing, Oklahoma State. Decent amount of Cowboy fans on hand this weekend, and they got to be loving what they're seeing. 13 runs in each of the first two games of the weekend. And we're still in the fourth inning of this one. And on the mound, as I said, just as impressive as the offense has been, Justin Campbell has been just as good. A no-hitter through three. And you really don't start talking about no-hitters until you get through five innings. But in light of what just happened in Major League Baseball last night with Wade Miley picking up the fourth already this season, and Sean Manaya, the A's, I believe, had one into the seventh last night. We've seen him before, haven't we? All right, that guy is something else. 2-0 to Ditzenberger hit foul. But I was referencing the run support is the crazy thing, and I don't think he's going to make it a whole lot farther with the no-hitter. You'd like to see Kansas put one across here this inning. But Miley didn't get any run support last night until the ninth, which is an odd spot to be in as a pitcher who's hanging zeros and not giving up hits, and you're wondering, well, geez, guys, at what point is my offense going to help me out? This young man, Campbell, had nine runs before he even was handed a Rawlings today. <laughs> and now he's pitching with a 13-run lead as Ditzenberger forces him to expend a lot of pitches on foul balls here. you got to admit, he does look like it's 1-0. I mean, he's locked in like it's a 1-0 game. That, that's a mentality you need to keep having. Defense is ready behind him. And I mean, if you're talking football, this is a time of possession, just nightmare. Grazed into the catcher's mid on a breaking ball. Down goes Ditzenberger. And with that, 10 up and 10 down against Justin Campbell. That is a nasty pitch. It's a good hitter that doesn't chase, but two strikes. That's uh, It's hard to get a good read uh, on this guy with how tall he is and over the top. He, he really gets a lot of tilt. There's another tall player for this Cowboy team. And the ball goes down. It's just a different angle to pick up first time through the order which is, uh, it's taken a minute to get there. He's only 6'7", so he's like third tallest on the team. That would be the tallest on the Kansas roster by full inch. There's a flare towards short. One shortstop lining out to another. Morrill's got it. And now 11 up and 11 down for Justin Campbell. When I'm talking taller, I'm not talking height, how tall he is. I'm talking about his uh, release point, the height of that. When he lets sure. go of the ball, he's not a uh, three-quarter sidearm type guy. He's up straight over the top and, and six seven. So, I mean, it would be equivalent of like a seven-foot pitcher. Wow. Brings in the heat here to Joseph Berger, 92 on the gun and in for a strike. No, I was just tongue-in-cheek joking that McCusker 6'8", and we saw Stone at 6'9 on the mound last night. Gargantuan Cowboys here. Something in the water down there in Stillwater. Yeah, they're growing as this uh, series is going, I'll tell you that. But they are really uh, athletic-looking bunch. Bouncer towards second. They had it played perfectly. The throw in time. Hewitt's got it. Flips to Garcia. And he's been perfect through four innings, has Justin Campbell. 13 to nothing Cowboys on ESPN Plus. Well, Mama said there'd be days like these, Kansas fans. The Jayhawks seeing 13 runs posted in the first four innings, and Kansas right now being no hits offensively. But even though Mama warned you, there's still tough pills to swallow. Speaking of Mama, Mother's Day tomorrow, 1 o'clock first pitch, just like today. So come on out, bring Mom with you. 
or stay at home and watch on ESPN Plus. We'll have the call for you at 1 o'clock tomorrow on Mother's Day. Plenty of shout outs to the good baseball moms of OSU and Kansas, I'm sure, tomorrow for the finale of this series. Cowboys looking like it's going to be a series one on a Saturday, but Kansas still with some time. But trailing by their biggest margin of the weekend. And here's Encarnacion Strand skying one to deep center field. Josenberger at the track will make the catch up against the fence. Christian Encarnacion Strand thought he had his 16th bomb of the year, but Tavian Josenberger pulls it back. That ball was crushed. Uh, that ball, the wind's blowing so hard. Uh, look at this recovery. He didn't see it the whole time. It's up in that gray sky. What? A, oh, my goodness. What a recovery. He didn't even know where he was at. It's a hard-nosed ball player right there. Wow. He lost that ball till it was coming down, Brian. And I think that ball was out, and it got blown back in. How about that? What a play. Lost his cap, but not the ball. Now Jake Thompson coming up next. I love what you said about Mother's Day. You have a great mother, and I do as well. But you think about these teams, their father-son, uh, both teams, huge father-son atmosphere, environment. But there's mothers. Uh, some of the women, they love baseball. They're more part of this than anything. And you don't just kind of like baseball. You either don't like it or you love it. So, I mean, th that's a big part of both of these uh, teams and uh, family atmosphere as well. I think about Cindy Price, the ultimate baseball mom. We'll talk about her tomorrow, but think about all the games she's watched over the years from her husband to her three boys that all played collegiately. And she's seen it all. I'll tell you that. Some baseball moms throughout the crowd there today. Ball and two strikes to Jake Thompson. Hits this one fairly softly toward Messenger. Comes up firing in time for out number two. Washalewski's been solid thus far. Here comes McCusker, but for Kansas, the midweek starter pressed into duty today after Eli Davis was lifted after just one out, and Sear goes an inning at two-thirds. It's now two and two-thirds for Washalewski of one-run ball. He's faced ten batters, given up just a couple of hits, but they were back-to-back -back doubles that led to the run. Here's one hit out toward Josenberger, has to come in and can't quite squeeze it. It's going to have to be a shoestring catch, but he couldn't quite squeeze it. So McCusker is safe. And the OSU inning continues here in the fifth. That might even be a tougher play than the one he just robbed off the wall, went face first right in the wall. But this one, the wind's blowing in. It's hard to be aggressive where you just go after it. But I like what Brett Vosick did. He was right there, knows he's got an aggressive center fielder. That's a long run for Vosick. He just ran 80 yards to make sure his guy could go after a ball and that there's someone there backing him up. It's not going to be a home run. Now Brock Mathis. That, by the way, scored a hit as it should have been. 13 now in the ball game for Oklahoma State. You start to look up and down this Cowboy lineup. All the multi-hit games, and here we are at the top of the fifth inning. It's a serious box score the Pokes are putting together. There's a rope to left, but foul. Ball and a strike to Mathis. Right. So, Trinkle. Two for three, Kevin, with three runs, three ribbies, and a walk. So he's been on base three or four times. Hewitt, three for four. Amazingly, Encarnacion Strand is 0 for four, but he has a run and a ribby today. Thompson has been on base twice. McCusker now one for four. But eight and nine, those guys have combined to go six for six in getting on base, including five hits and a walk. So ultimately, already, they've got Four multi-hit games here in the fifth inning, but if you add in walks in terms of multi-times on base, six of nine Cowboys are already there. You know, it's kind of funny. Uh, it's not funny for him, but for Encarnacion Strand, this is by far the worst game of his year. <laughs> He's like, oh, this is horrible right now, and his team's up 13-zip. I mean, that yep. that's crazy, but I, I like what Coach Graves has done. His player development, he's got three guys who didn't really, I mean, Eli knew, but not used to pitching Saturday, didn't know they were even going to be throwing today. And now these are all guys that he's turned into uh, legit starters. Wash has come in and done a nice job, only one one run scored. And I, I think that's a job well done, uh, anything not crooked against this lineup. 
Ball high here to Mathis, now three and two. Yeah, I know of at least a few folks that tuned in at two thinking this was still a two o'clock start, which is what we told you yesterday. It's what it was advertised as all along until a late switch. And if you tuned in at two and you saw 13 to nothing, you probably thought Encarnacion Strand had hit three jacks and had seven RBI. Amazing they've done all this and he's 0 for 4. High heat here blown by and down goes Mathis on an 83 mile an hour pitch. 13 to nothing Cowboys as we go to the bottom of the fifth here in Lawrence. On to the bottom of the fifth we go. Obviously, if you're a Kansas fan, you're hoping in chunks they can claw their way back in this. Three runs here, four runs there, make a game of it. If you're an OSU fan, the only drama remaining is, can this young man keep it going? Justin Campbell is perfect through four, and he's pitching with a 13-run lead. I mean, it's stuff on both ends of the spectrum. You almost never see a line on the same day. Like I said, when Wade Miley had his no-hitter last night in the bigs, he didn't even have a lead until the top of the ninth. In this case, a 13-run lead, and he's been perfect, 12 up and 12 down. Messenger trying to break that up here in the fifth. That's awesome, too, but you think about that guy from Baltimore memes. Uh, what he did, 27 outs, what he 26 first pitch strikes. How much better did he get because he was ahead in the, in the count? That's a great point. Here behind in the count, they get Messenger to fly one out to right side of the infield. Play made at second base by Hewitt. That's a big out of KU's cleanup hitter. Now 13 up and 13 down. What's it like when you're on the wrong side of a guy that's dealing like this in the dugout? How much are you sharing feedback with each other as you always do on on where he's locating what he's throwing and does it start to get anxious as the innings go on and a guy is pitching as masterfully as we've seen justin campbell to this point you couldn't have said it better because uh the, this pitching dictates everything uh, i've been in so many dugouts where you got a guy dealing over there i remember shane comine just dealing you don't think you're going to get a run the whole game and those bats on the other team couldn't be more loose. They know if they could scrap together one run, that's enough. You know, so it's what do you do when you're up there now, hit a 14-run home run? I mean, that's a lot of pressure where you're on the other side. You're just so loose. You got some, I mean, even if you strike out, get them next time, we probably get 10 at-bats this game. But it's, uh, it's a totally different uh, mindset just because of what the score is. And you don't want to try to do too much. Just stay within yourself and try to get a guy's timing off and rhythm. Timing still on right now for Campbell. A 92-mile-an-hour fastball blown by Vosick. And he just made quick work of two veteran hitters hitting fourth and fifth in the Kansas order. Now two outs here in the Kansas fifth. I, I do like his composure for a freshman. He's up there ready to pitch and pr pretty locked in, like his mechanics as well. But over the top, it's a different. I'd say you have to see this two times through the order to have a, have a good feel just because of uh, where that ball's coming straight down from. Cowboys ranked 20th in the country, but looking like a top five team this weekend. They enter the weekend fifth in the league standings. It's hard to imagine four teams better than this bunch. But they've dealt with pitching injuries. They've had to move some guys around. And clearly the offense hitting on all cylinders this weekend. There's a ball barreled up on, but right at the left fielder. McCusker's got it. Hardly had to move a muscle. And through five, he remains perfect. 13 to nothing, Oklahoma State. And Justin Campbell having a career day. A Baker's dozen of runs on a Baker's dozen of hits. And Oklahoma State for the second consecutive day, hanging 13 on the board here in Lawrence. All the while, Justin Campbell has been lights out on the mound. Perfect through five innings. Steve Wasilewski has been solid as KU's third pitcher of the day, second reliever coming on after Eli Davis did not make it out of the first. Wash has given up one run over the course of three innings. Scattering three hits, a couple of Ks, no walks. Walks were an issue for Eli Davis, who had as many walks as hits allowed, ultimately tagged with 
Seven runs, a couple of wild pitches, three walks. And then Ryan Sear behind him, five runs, three of which were earned over an inning and two-thirds. Cade Cabanis quickly with two balls against him. I'll tell you what I think about this, Brian. This, this hitting lineup is great, but by no means the best uh, hitting lineup Oklahoma State's ever seen. Josh Holliday, that team they had, I mean, that is – run circles around at this lineup, and that's saying something how good this is. But what I think of, if they have another shutout today, they'll be leading the country in shutouts. I mean, that's the kind of team that could go a long ways into postseason ball. I don't care who you're playing. If, if you're doing that, it's shutting people out. And their offensive numbers are so high that you don't know, think about it, but what a better stat you could have is shutouts. It's a great point, Kevin. And when you consider the patchwork weekend rotation as well because of some injuries. It's really an impressive job by Coach Holiday and his staff, Coach Walton. And they've had continuity. You know, this yep. is the ninth season for Josh Holiday with the ninth season as Rob Walton as his pitching coach. And, and you bring in the big league influences of Matt Holiday and Robin Ventura. It's not surprising they've enjoyed the great success they have. Three and two now on Cabinets. And even more than saying, yeah, these are the best pitchers I've ever seen, that, that's a team effort. I'm not talking about guys getting shutouts on their own. I'm talking about guys throwing strikes, defenders making plus plays all the way around. you got to be doing a lot of things right. It's not just having the best arm in the country. This one hit toward Cosentino on one hop. The seniors got it, throws high and in time. One retired here in the Cowboys sixth. Washelewski, what a job he's done so far. Got some good hitters out in front, but even more important, jammed some good hitters. So one run uh, given up is looking like uh, really good so far. And Washelewski has turned himself into a legit starter. He, he's been really good this year. And I like the way that uh, strength training in the offseason has helped him. He, he looks a lot more confident. Posted good numbers, although this one is mashed by Morrill. That's way, way, way gone. About 50 feet above the wall, the tops of the trees. That's a no-doubter for Morrill, who's now four for four on the day, having a career day. And he just lacks the triple for the cycle and may still have time. Could you see a cycle and a perfect game on the same day? That'd be crazy. Both with a ways to go. <laughs> that would be something else. That's something nobody's ever seen before. I don't care who you are, but it's something I've never seen. Eight and nine hole middle infielders. Both of them have had a try to sack bunt, end up getting a base hit out of it, and later in that game, a home run, one of them being a grand slam. And those are guys batting eight and nine, playing shortstop second base. The eight and nine spots just continue to rake. We're talking about now, including a walk out of Garcia, who's up here currently. They are seven for seven and getting on base, including six hits. And of the six hits, you've got three doubles and a homer. So four of the six hits, extra base hits. This is just from the eight and nine spots. And how about two base hits without swinging the bat? Amazing. Bump base hits. Yep. High and away. Not even going for a base hit, but just using the angle. I mean, that. That, that's a, a really tough lineup. That's all I'm saying. When you can do, you think about small ball, but that's not small ball. If you can do both, that, that's, a, that's the best thing you can do. And it, it's been a really, really good example of doing that. There's a punch him out, strikeout looking. Down goes Garcia. That's the first out made by the eight and nine spots for OSU today. That's the first pitch I've seen looking. Wow. To Mara. How do you even catch that ball? He's not set up there by any means, but good job by an umpire not going by hitting the mitt, but by going that actually is a strike. It kind of fooled everybody, but that's the first time I've seen with two strikes. Cowboys not fight and battle with everything they have and usually get the job done with two strikes. Trickle up there next. First pitch swinging. Ropes one to right, but hooking foul. And that's a long first strike for a leadoff hitter who's also had an excellent day. On base, three out of four times, including a two for three on the hitting side of things. Three ribbies, three runs. as a double. And he's also been very good in center field. 14 to nothing, OSU. You want to Mike Gundy somewhere on hand. <laughs> this, 
feels like some recent football scores that obviously Lance Leipold was just brought in to change and reverse KU's fortunes in that football series with OSU. I did see, think I saw a mullet running around here, but I just saw a fox running right by last night after the game, looking around. Swing and a miss. One and two now on Trankel. Well, maybe Kansas can put up a, a field goal's worth of runs and erase this perfect game no-no talk real fast in the bottom of this inning. This one just misses. Wasilewski was walking off the mound thinking that was going to be a called strike three. In the bottom of this inning, we'll see the bottom of the order. Seven, eight, and nine for Kansas. Lichty, Costantino, and Wagner as they try to break up the groove that Justin Campbell's in the midst of. Now three and two. Here comes the payoff pitch to Trankel. Bounce right side, but foul. But something else that's big is it win in your state. And I've looked at all the Oklahoma State stuff all year, and they're proud of some stuff, but all they care about is winning that bedlam. They're, they want to beat Oklahoma. I mean, that, that's what your season starts, so that, that Oklahoma OSU rival, and you love to see that. that. That's what college baseball, that's what sports is all about. and It's, it's such a big uh, rival. I just like to see that. There's a liner toward right field that'll fall for a hit. It's a three-hit day and on base four times now for Caden Trankel. Really good swing on that low ball. What a hard-fought battle. I think that ball was actually a ball that was so low. The one before from a lefty has got to cross the plate. Uh, but if an uh, umpire thinks you're showing him up at all, I'm probably not going to get that call. I don't think that was the intention. But to me, that was... Uh, Ball, it was so low, just a good swing. Justin Campbell is indeed making it happen as he sits by himself in the dugout. When a guy's rolling along like he is, you give him his space. He's still got 12 outs to go before he makes Cowboy history, but he has been dealing, and I suppose that make it happen hoodie he's wearing right now is pretty apropos when you're 15 up and 15 down on the mound for Justin Campbell. I think about this team, even their bus, when they pull in, you know this team's here. I mean, it's not like any surprise that, that these guys show up. I've seen that with Gene Stevens and Wichita State teams. I mean, you know they're in the ballpark when they show up, just physically. And even on their bus, uh, Pistol Pete just there staring at you. Couldn't look more mad. And I mean, these are how these guys are. They're, they're having a great series, and they just look like uh, they're never satisfied and kind of just uh, not happy the whole time. But. The, the Pistol Pete, I think uh, they've been swinging Pete pretty much, you know. It's uh, swinging the bat well. No doubt. 15 hits today, 14 runs on the heels of 13 runs here yesterday. And you add in the brilliant pitching on top of that. And efficient pitching, too, by Justin Campbell. And this has been a pretty... Picture perfect performance if you're watching from an OSU perspective. We were talking about Campbell sitting in the dugout by himself moments ago. He's only thrown 44 pitches, Kevin. It's less than nine pitches per inning. Five perfect innings to this point, as I said, 15 up, 15 down, but on just 44 pitches. That is amazing. You think about the best inning ever, Sandy Koufax, threw out three strikeouts on nine straight pitches. If he did that today, it would be more pitches. That's uh, impressive. Steven Strasburg just had an immaculate inning a couple of years ago. One and two here to Hewitt. I remember Pedro's brother having a Ramon Hart a Martinez for the Expos having a perfect game through 10 innings, end up getting a loss in the game. <laughs> Not only no hitter through nine, perfect game through nine. I mean, he was an extra inning still with that and ended up losing. That's probably why he's known as Pedro's brother, but that's Ramon. Uh, he was a good in his own right. That's how good Pedro was. Is, uh, 
Bouncer toward the right side. Costantino, terrific glove work, gathers, fires in time. A web gym highlight right there as he smothered that ball, sprung to his feet, and got the out at first. Cowboys tack on one more, though, 14 zip. 7, 8, 9 coming up for Kansas, trying to break up the day that Justin Campbell has been dealing. First pitch breaking ball down to Tom Lichty. 15 batters faced, 15 batters retired. For the freshman Justin Campbell. Tall, lanky right-hander. Lichty flares one towards shallow center, but good run on it. And the catch is going to be made out there by Trinkle. Good job by Trinkle there. First step back you always want to do, but off the end of the bat a little bit, made a good run on it. Another nice pitch. It shows some respect to Lichty. He just hammered a ball in the first day or early in the game and uh, now got a first pitch breaking ball from a guy that's just been dealing first pitch strikes. But I like to think what Costantino did. He dove towards that ball to get that out. No way you're going to make that play otherwise. Tremendous plus play in a game where it doesn't look like it matters, but that could be a spark to, to get a little something going. Well, that's what you need from your senior leaders, too, to, to show that never give up, never say die mentality. And you see that from every player on the field from a Rich Price Coast team. They're always going to stay in the game with their heads in, competing to the bitter end or the thrilling end, as it may be. And we've seen that two nights in a row now with good effort in the latter innings, even in margins that have been beyond the reach. 14-0 right now, they're still battling, but can they get a hit to break up this perfect game no-hitter that's being thrown right now by Justin Campbell? Campbell going to that breaking ball a little more the second time through the order, and it's just a different look early in the count. You're used to that fastball coming straight down, and then breaking ball goes up out of the hand. So it's just another aspect to look at. Did he go around? He did, and down goes Cosentino, a second out here in the Kansas sixth. That's Six Ks now for Campbell. That's how you pitch backwards, breaking ball, breaking ball, fastball. I don't think that's a strike or a swing, uh, but if you're dealing like that, I like talked earlier in the game, if you show you're going to hit your spot, you can see uh, get three, four inches off the plate by the end of the game just by uh, them expecting it to be a strike. and. It's a great pitch with two strikes, whether it's a strike or not. Now Jack Wagner sees a breaking ball strike at the knees. Wagner 0 for 1. Batting average down to 274. Lifts this one foul and quickly finds himself in an 0-2 hole. Again, just 52 pitches thrown. And... Campbell is one pitch away from being two-thirds of the way through this game. He talked about the rarity of Sears' complete game, two-hit shutout of Texas two years ago on 86 pitches. Campbell has a chance to economize his pitches even better than that. Wow. As he'll throw at least 54 in this inning, but still have 32 to go with... Nine outs left to equal Sear. There's a punch him out, called third strike. Down goes Wagner, and Campbell's brilliance continues. Now six innings of perfection on the mound. Cowboys continue to lead it, 14-0. New pitcher for the Kansas Jayhawks as we move on to the seventh inning. Kansas hands the ball to Sam Brady, a freshman out of Lake Quivira, Kansas, and KC Rockhurst. Jayhawks find themselves down 14-0. But a developing story is the pitching of Oklahoma State starter Justin Campbell, his mastery on the mound. Now 18 batters up and 18 batters down. He is nine outs away from a perfect game. Meanwhile, the youngster comes on for Kansas, Sam Brady. What's the mindset here for a guy that doesn't get a ton of Big 12 opportunities? Suddenly, even though it's a blowout game, is facing off against the best hitter in America, arguably, in Encarnacion Strand. What's going on between the ears of Brady? I love the way the Jayhawks uh, mold guys into things and give them some roles early in their career and then see how they develop by the time they get older. And I think this guy's going to be a, a big developer. The way his arm works, 
he gets long right out of the glove, nice and loose. He looks like he's just playing catch and gets really good extension. So, I mean, he hasn't had the best year by any means, but he's got some good experience, and you're not going to get any better experience than going against this type of lineup, this type of hitter right here. I mean, you have to be in the big leagues to face a guy this good. So he's never going to see anybody better than this the rest of his career. It can only make him better. This one smashed toward third, a juggle. A recollection and a fire across the diamond in time. Nice job by Messenger. And believe it or not, in a 14 to nothing OSU route, the national hitter of the month is now 0 for 5. He has had a hand in an RBI and a run, so it's not like he's not contributing at all. But amazing to think on a day like this, one of their proudest days at the plate, that Encarnacion Strand would be 0 for 5. You got to bench that guy. I mean, how do you even let him play anymore? <laughs> you got to get him on the bench. And no, but that's the best player I've seen all year uh, by far. What Jayhawks have done today just with him alone is, I was thinking contain that guy. Four for six yesterday, and the ball he almost hit out of the park, but he just golfed it. They're all uh, good uh, hacks and hitting around shifts. Uh, unreal how, how well they've done today. He's not going to feel good tonight. I don't care if they win or lose. Jayhawks have done a nice job with him. Dina Cola comes on as a pinch hitter here with one outs in the seventh, taking the spot of Thompson. On the season, this young man, Dina Cola, hitting a 200. It's just his sixth at bat of the year. He smashes this one to left. If it's fair, it's gone. It's hooking toward the pole, and that's a fair ball and a home run. And Nick Dina Cola steps up with opportunity knocking and knocks it out of the park with a solo bomb. Just his second hit of the year, obviously his first home run, and you can hear the roars from the Cowboy dugout fired up for their reserve. Everybody having a hand in this one today. That was a Carlton Fisk right there. That ball was gone off the bat. It was just a matter if it stayed fair or foul, and it looked like it hooked way foul to me, at least by a couple feet, but it started in play big time, and I thought it went on the left side. It's hard to tell from this angle. But, yeah, that's a guy, that good second hit to have for sure, and like I said, that both these teams are stacked. There's guys on the bench that uh, can really play as well, and I'm sure that inner squad game is just, uh, just unreal type atmosphere. 15 to nothing Oklahoma State after a 13-4 win last night. And with that swing, they now have their third best offensive output of the season. Third. <laughs> Earlier this year, they beat Arkansas Pine Bluff 28 to nothing. They beat West Virginia 21-11 in eight innings. And then there were 14 run outbursts, outbursts versus uh, Wichita State and Kansas State. As this one by McCusker is smashed way, way, way back, and it's gone. Back to back homers off of Brady, and now 16 runs on the board for Oklahoma State as McCusker can touch them all for the fifth time of the year. That is an A hack right there. He robbed one yesterday, but I don't think he would have been able to rob this one. This one is absolutely launched. That's an A hack right there. On time, aggressive with the A hack. If you don't get inside on those kind of hands and leave it over the plate on this kind of righty, what a power swing. And, and I've never seen a team look so just non, uh, not happy to be doing this. It's un unreal. It looks like they do it every day. And, but that's a, that's a really good team. And that swing, that's up that light pole, Brian. Maybe over it. Amazing. Brock Mathis up there next. Quickly one and one on Mathis. They came in hitting 270 overall on the year, 275 in the league. And not even two full games into this one, they've tacked on 29 more runs. And we're seeing homers from unlikely sources like the Grand Slam yesterday that came in the nine hole out of Golda. You get a pinch hit, Dina Cola homer here. And doing this with their big dog, 0 for 5, Encarnacion Strand. Unbelievable. 
And all the while, if you're just joining us, it's a perfect game on the mound through six for Justin Campbell. I don't think it's going to make Kansas fans feel a whole lot better, but I will repeat, they scored 21 against the Big 12 foe West Virginia and 14 against the Big 12 foe Kansas State. So there have been other league schools that have had big numbers put on them. The tough pill to swallow was the perfect game on the mound on the same day. Well, how about Oklahoma putting about a 20-burger up on them? I, I doubt that felt too good down there in Stillwater, but that's, uh, that's something else as well. But they could give up some runs, but this, they're, they're a team that's getting shutouts. That, that, that's more, more than impressive. But, yeah, it's a different kind of team when you're talking about even having games in that, that 20 run range. I don't remember ever playing anything like that. Literally all the way through. That's, uh, and that, these guys have been living there this year. That was a 16 to two loss you referenced in Bedlam. That one smashed, but it's well foul. And the tag on top of the Rich Jantz Development Center. Three and two to Brock Mathis. So what's the challenge in the Kansas dugout with nine outs to go to not let Justin Campbell make history? Don't allow on a day where the Jayhawks obviously have this one well beyond their reach in the win and loss debate, how can they at least avoid not being a footnote in Cowboy history with an all-star performance on the mound that could be either a perfect game or a no-hitter when it's all said and done? Does anything need to be said? You've been coached by Rich Price. What will he say as we enter these last three innings offensively? Top of the order coming up next inning to try to break up what that man at the back of the dugout with the purple hoodie has done these first six innings. Well, I'd say you remember that game down in Norman when you guys took uh, Oklahoma extra innings and beat them with the home run? They scored 16 runs on this team. This game's not over yet. We put up 16 runs these last few innings. We're playing some extra innings. I mean, it's not that that's the way you got to think about it. And they've, this whole conference is stacked. But if Oklahoma could do it on these guys, I guarantee you the Jayhawks can as well. So. You never know. It's uh, not, nothing's over till it's over. That, that's all I'm saying. And you got to play the game that way. You're going to get hurt if you're not going full effort, and you just keep going. You, you, you never give up, never quit. And might not be realistic, but I don't care. If you play the game, you, you play it the right way. It doesn't matter what the scoreboard says. Nice catch and right by Jack Wagner on the line out by Cabinus for the second out of the inning. And yeah, that's that's interesting. You could point to the fact that. A team Kansas has beaten has put up that many runs on OSU, and well, they probably got started a little bit sooner than the seventh <laughs> inning to get their 16. It's it's certainly worth noting, and and I'm not even talking about you know huge runs at this point. Just talking about breaking up perfection and and trying to make sure that this isn't a historic moment for Campbell that comes on your home field on the same day that they put 16 on the board. Morrill has had as big a hand in that as any. And oh, by the way, he lacks the triple for the cycle. Homering in his last at bat, he's four for four. A couple of singles, a double, a homer. But he won't get the cycle here. Flies this one down the right field line. Wagner giving chase will make the catch. And that will retire the side. But two more tacked on. Dina Cola, first home run. McCusker, his fifth. Back to back jacks make it 16 to nothing. For the second consecutive game, the Cowboys have 17 hits. And now, very surprisingly, as we enter the seventh, Kansas still has none. Can the young man who earned his nickname versus this team come up with a hit here? Big hits, dits, grounds one right field side, and on the right side of the infield, gathered by Hewitt in time. Another quick out. Just 55 pitches thrown by Justin Campbell, and he is eight outs away from a perfect game. But these will be the toughest next two outs. Ahuna and Josenberger, the two uber talented freshman that both could wind up as freshman All-American. Certainly Josenberger well on his way toward that. Maui today 0 for 2. A breaking ball strike has him at 1 and 1. Yesterday 0 for 3 with a walk for Ahuna. Ditsenberger now 0 for 7 on the series. 
Now a ball and two strikes. What has Campbell done the best? You've talked about the release point coming down on you, all that, but if you could sum up this masterful outing to this point with one thing that he's been especially great at. Did he go? No. Two and two now on Ahuna. What's that one thing been for Justin Campbell? Well, take a look at him right now. He's off the mound. That's the first time all game I've seen him not on the mound ready to pitch. Look, he's ready before any hitter's ready. He's up there ready to pitch. He knows what his mechanics are, and he's ready to start dealing. If you do that, how good is your defense going to be behind you? They're, they better be ready if you're, you're that ready. So, I mean, for a freshman, that's just great tempo, great composure. This is the first time ever, ever even seen him get off the mound. Oh, that is the worst spot to get hit on front top right there. Right that off did. the foot. Yeah. He hobbled around a bit, but stays in. The 2-2. Two -two. Now 3-2. and two. And again, it's not just a no-hitter. It's a perfect game right now. No walks to this point. Does he feel any pressure now with suddenly a three-ball count for the first time in forever? Well, Maui punched last time inside. He was not letting that happen again. What a tough kid. Lifts this one well toward left. McCusker's got a beat on it, though, and he will make the catch for out number two. Needing to throw a strike. Campbell did, and McCusker had his back. Now Tavian Josenberger. If there's one guy in this lineup you'd have to fear the most to break up a no-no, it's Tavian Josenberger, who came in hitting 400 in Big 12 play, 333 on the season, just had his 24-gamer snapped on Wednesday, but he's been that good. He's fast. He can get on in a number of ways. You could make the case this is the toughest remaining hurdle for Campbell with seven outs to go. Well, take a look at where the defense is playing. This is a guy who can lay down a drag bunt at any second and take a base hit right now if he wants it. You know, but this defense, they're playing in the outfield. Every one of these infielders and just getting range against a good hitter, uh, really good hitter. I think if you one guy to break this up in the whole conference, Josenberger. He not only gets on base, he gets hits both sides of the plate. and. Just a, just an absolute stud uh, with what he's done. I like that play in the outfield. Took away an extra base hit after he lost the ball. The 2-1. Bounce towards second. They've got it with Hewitt. Throws the first in time. And he has seven innings of perfection, does Justin Campbell. Six outs to go. Pitching with a 16-run lead. Campbell has been masterful. Justin Campbell putting on that magic hoodie between innings. He is seven innings deep. Threatening perfection here in Lawrence. 21 up, 21 down. He has been lights out. The only thing he struggled with is getting that hoodie on. Everything else has been a breeze. A no-hitter, a perfect game, a line that includes now seven strikeouts in seven innings pitched. And we referenced when Ahuna got the count full. <laughs> Pitching with a three-ball count for the first time in forever. How about for the first time all day? That was the only time he's ever been one pitch away from a walk. Here's Garcia flying one to deep center. Going back is Josenberger, and he will make the catch on the edge of the track for a long and loud first out. One up and one down here in the OSU eighth. Jayhawks are going to tinker a little bit here as Connor Van Cleve comes on at first base for Dylan Ditzenberger. Be interesting to see what the last six at-bats look like if you stick with your starters or if you try to throw in a pinch hitter or two just to give a different look to Campbell. Of course, Kansas playing without two of its best offensive players and Nolan Metcalf and Casey Burnham, so you're Pitch hitting options are a little bit limited. Trankel up there next. The 2-0 count as Brady's out for a second inning of work. Brady trying to bounce back for the back-to-back -back homers served up last inning. Now a 2-1 count after the foul ball. On base four times today is the OSU center fielder. 
I don't know what to tell you about Campbell. It definitely looked, something looked weird to me putting on that jacket. It looked like he was not comfortable with that throwing arm. Like his hand was numb or cramping or almost like blisters or something. It, it Something doesn't look, uh, he's definitely working with something and battling through something, believe it or not. But he, he was, something is not 100% right with him. There's a walk of Trankel and we actually went into the dugout because he did have somebody talking to him that looked like a trainer prior to putting the hoodie on. And then he was looking at his hand as he got his hand through the, the sleeve. He seems to be sitting fine. And obviously, when you've got a no-no going, nobody's going to come up and bother you. He's just focused, staring straight ahead. I don't want to speculate on what you may have seen there too much until we see him back out of the mound and see if it affects him. But he has been absolutely brilliant for seven innings for the second year freshman out of Simi Valley, California. I just mentioned it because if he is going through something, he is not showing it on that mound. I mean, if he's in uh, not feeling 100% right or dealing with some kind of wrist or uh, blister type situation, he has done a great job battling. And that's just focus right there. If you're not feeling your best and still giving your best performance. Hewitt pops this one up in foul ground, third base side, and it will touch down on the metal bleachers despite a nice effort by Messenger at third. 16 runs on 17 hits. 29 runs on 34 hits in the two games to this point. OSU making a statement as they wrap up their conference road schedule. They'll have Baylor at home for their next series, and then New Orleans after that. Two and one to Max Hewitt. Catcher, second baseman. Versatility extraordinaire. He's got three hits today. All singles, an RBI and a run. Now 37 RBI on the year for Hewitt. And he's made some nice plays at second base. It's something you got to talk about when you get this deep into a perfect hitter or a no Perfect game, no hit scenario, that is. Defensive help along the way. They haven't had any Herculean efforts on full extension layouts to rob hits or the catch like we saw yesterday in left field by McCusker at the top of the wall. But they have had several plus plays that required a little extra. And he's been one of the guys that's delivered a couple of those. He's going to draw a walk here. But honestly, it, most of it has just been the mastery on the mound by Campbell, who's been pitching ahead with almost every batter, fanning a third of the batters he's faced, and then has gotten a lot of routine ground balls and flyouts to fill in the blanks from there. Well, you, you got the magic eye. You're right about that because you know what they've had to do is he, everybody knows where the defense is. They're playing the shift. They're playing deep. There's no threat of a small ball game with this kind of score, so you can play as deep as you want. There's a little cue off the end of the bat. Brady fields it nicely, throws across in time, and this is unreal. Christian Encarnacion Strand, on a day in which his team has 16 runs, is now 0 for 6. It just doesn't add up. That is baseball, man. That is, wow, he is not going to feel good tonight. and he, he really should, but that's, uh, you know what it reminds me of is like, Oh, Jordan's been killing us. We, we need to stop Jordan, and then, all right, you stop Jordan, and then Paxton has 40 points, and then Pippen has 80 points, and, I mean, you shut down one guy, and you give up 100 to the other guys. It's unreal. There's a big swing. Way, way back off the bat of Dina Cola. He's got back-to-back -back homers. A pinch hitter who had just one hit all year has now gone yard twice off of Brady. And this one, a three-run bomb to make it 19 to nothing. Dina Cola will always remember this day in Lawrence. Well, that's what you want from your pitch hitter up there ready to hit. Could not be more ready to hit there. First pitch, aggressive A-hack. The ball was down, golfed it out of here. Look at that. That ball is very down. Usually get a rollover. Former West Virginia Mountaineer turned Oklahoma State Cowboy, and he's got two homers today. We were singing the praises of Campbell in that cleanup spot. He gets pinch hit for, and the guy behind him has been lights out. Here's a laser beam stabbed by Messenger, nearly took his glove off, 
and that will retire the side. Excellent job off the hot shot comebacker from McCusker. Wow. 19 to nothing Oklahoma State. And we keep saying it, as impressive as the offense has been, the pitching on the mound has been equally astonishing. At some point, you're going to disbelieve me if they keep adding runs, but I'm telling you, he has gone 21 outs of perfection, has Justin Campbell, and his next out, if he can get it here in the eighth, would be his longest outing of the year. Three times this year, Campbell's gone seven innings. K-State, West Virginia, and Oral Roberts. Four hits versus the Wildcats is the fewest he's allowed over seven innings. He gave up six and eight, respectively, in the other two games. Zero hits today. And now he faces off with Skyler Messenger. And if Tavian Josenberger was the toughest hurdle remaining for him to clear last inning, this would be the second toughest remaining hurdle. And maybe just as tough when you consider it's a fourth-year junior staring back at you. The 0-1 quickly becomes 0-2. Messenger obviously hitless today, lowering his average to 326. Yesterday came up with a hit in the eighth, but was robbed on two brilliant swings before that, including one up against the fence in left center field. Leads Kansas in numerous categories. Ball high. And if anybody remaining would have a veteran reproach on top of the stats to back it up to be the guy that breaks up a no-no, you'd think it would be Messenger. Obviously, Vasek behind him, somewhat similar. Hit foul. Yeah, you look at that battle against K-State, and those are two big-time pitchers going against each other, and he went seven innings, giving up four hits. Jayhawks, believe it or not, it's not over. They could still do better than that. He's only got through seven. He hasn't got one out yet. They could run together five straight hits, and it's a better performance. So this game ain't over yet. Bouncer towards short. They'll have to hustle the throw by Morrill in time. And the team leader with 56 hits on the year for Kansas is retired. The perfect game continues. Now can Brett Vosick, the team leader in walks, somehow break up perfection as you see Morrill again hustling in on a nice play. So is Messenger. Both of them are hustling, but I love that pitching. The high fastball to get an eyes change and then a slow, low change up, get a weak ground ball. Vosick from the left-hand side, and the shift is on as you see Morrill move about 10 feet left of the bag at seconds. Second baseman standing in right field. And an 0-1 count to Vosick. Who homered yesterday, has the most patient eye at the bat in terms of drawing walks. But now he's seen two strikes come by. 0-2 to Vosick. I think the most important pitch in baseball is strike one. He has done a nice job of that. But even more important is getting the first two out of the three pitches or strikes. If your first pitch isn't, the next two have to be. And that is what he is doing. Justin Campbell rarely getting to even two balls on a hitter. The one two to Vosick. Late on the swing, but protective, he stays alive. 91 on the gun. When does adrenaline kick in? Of course, he's not that taxed, which is 75 pitches, but you start to get this close to the finish line. He's reaching back for a little extra here, still popping the mid at 91. Yeah, that was a B hack. Great job keeping that at bat alive, and Vosick gets better with the better pitching. This is the best we've seen. Ball outside, two and two. Say one person in the order that could break this thing up is Brett Vosick. Uh, he has hit the best pitching. Th th those are his best games, and th this is the best pitcher we've seen on this mound this year just by how well he's competed. Breaking ball high, and for just the second time today, a three-ball count as he comes all the way down off the mound to gather himself. Seven and a third is the longest he's gone. We referenced seven innings of four hit ball versus the Wildcats. That was on 50 more pitches than what he's thrown today. Can he keep perfection going here? A payoff pitch to Vasek. Ball four, he walked him. The no hitter is still intact, but the perfect game is no more. And if there was a Jayhawk in line to break it up with a walk, it's that young man. Brett Vosick, his team leading 37th base on balls this year.
Yeah, one thing I like too, you saw even in the first inning yesterday, uh, Coach Hall trying to break up a good hitter's rhythm and everything, and Jayhawks probably have not stepped out enough to break up that rhythm, but uh, they just keep playing it the right way. Now he blows a fastball at 91 by Tulamero. 0 and 1 to the Kansas catcher, who's 0 for 2. Perfect game broken up. Now, how about the no hitter? Kansas trying to do something to dent this scoreboard down 19 to nothing. And he paints the black on the outer edge there to jump ahead 0 and 2. It's crazy with Brent Vosick. What a patient hitter. I kind of take that for granted, you know, with how well he can swing the bat, but he lays off some tough pitches and what a good example, a way to just keep battling all the way through. Swung on and missed, he got him. Tulamero would love to have that one back. High and tight, he went for it. And down he goes on an 89 mile an hour heater. Yeah, Brock Mathis, he wanted that one too. He's like, all right, there's three outs, let's get in the dugout. But that, that's a battery right there. You think about always the pitcher, but I think about who's catching him. That's a team out there, and you're not going to do a lot of no-hitter, a lot of perfect game type stuff unless you have a serious connection going with that guy behind the plate. Four outs away from a no-hitter. Tom Lichty coming up next. Lichty 0 for 2. Batting average has now dipped just a touch below 240. But he's a guy that's hit cleanup at times for Kansas and certainly a capable bat from the left-hand side. Junior out of Reno. High and away. I saw one no-hitter this year where not only the nobody talks to the pitcher, uh, nobody was talking to the catcher either. They were both locked in so much and Pitching coach couldn't even tell the catcher what to do because they didn't even want to mess with their, their uh, connection they had going. Bouncer towards shorts. Morrill's got it. Sprints to the bag and gets the force out there. That will retire the side. Out number 24 recorded. Three outs to go for Justin Campbell. It is bid for a no-hitter. On to the ninth inning we go. The Cowboys with a 19-run lead, but more importantly, three outs away from a no-hitter for Justin Campbell. And Kansas will bring in another reliever, Gabriel Sotomayor, taking over for the last three outs for Kansas in the field. All eyes on what the Cowboys hope will be three more outs when they take the field in the bottom of this inning. No more perfect game talk as Vasek broke that up with a walk. But Justin Campbell has been the story here today. If it's possible to outshine 19 runs. Brock Mathis lines one to second. Constantino's got it for a quick first out for Sotomayor. Hard to imagine that a 19 run on 18 hit outburst would be outshined by anything. But we are three outs away from seeing Justin Campbell possibly throw a no hitter here at Kansas. A guy that came in with a four and one record, but the last three starts he made were all games that the Cowboys lost at TCU, at home to Texas, at Oklahoma. And yet here he sits 24 outs deep with all the run support a pitcher could ever hope for in a month, let alone a day. He just needs three more outs. And he'll be facing the bottom of the order, 8, 9, and 1. This one bounced by Cabanis to Cosentino. He's got it. Flips to Connor Van Cleve. Quickly two outs. And what will Rich Price do with those last three Kansas hitters? It'll be Cosentino, who just made the last two defensive plays. Wagner and Ditzenberger has been pinch hit for with Van Cleve. Or rather, he's been replaced in the field by Van Cleve. So... You've got those three set to come up. For Van Cleve, it would be his first time facing Campbell. Casatino and Wagner, a collective 0 for 4. That's the 8, 9, and 1 due up in the bottom of this inning. Meanwhile, this is something we've hardly talked about, but Morrill is just the triple away from the cycle. I say just the triple, it's the toughest part, but the eight-hole hitter who's done a great job defensively as well for this Cowboy team Shortstop is four for five, four runs, including a homer, a double, and a couple of singles. 
you're all over it because I'd say the perfect game, that's so rare, you never see that, but you see no hitters. We saw lighter, uh, nasty for Vanderbilt's already seen a 16 strikeout, no hitter. You see that, but you never see cycles. This is even tougher now that the perfect game's gone. The next biggest thing is the cycle, even more than a no hitter. Really? Way bigger. Way, what's tougher to get? What's been more of a, over history of baseball? Cycles or no hitters? Ton more no hitters. Not even close. We'll see if Morrill can deliver here with a two ball, two strike count. Sotomayor brings it in. And that's a called third strike. And a big inning of relief for Gabriel Sotomayor. But now the attention shifts to the man of the hour, Justin Campbell. Three outs away from a no hitter here in Lawrence. There's a look at a memorable scoreboard in multiple columns. 19 to nothing our score. But that zero hits on the Kansas ledger perhaps looms largest and speaks loudest as Justin Campbell comes out for three final outs in his bid for a no hitter. Swing and a miss by Costantino, who's 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a ground out. Behind him is Jack Wagner in the order. He's 0 for 2 with two Ks. It was a perfect game until last inning when Brett Vosick, one out deep in the eighth, drew a walk to break up the perfect game. Now Costantino and company trying to break up the no-no. A 2-1. Lifted foul. And now 2-2 two two to the fifth-year senior out of Leewood. Justin Campbell is not showing it, but he is amped up right now. He's just thrown the first two pitches 93 miles an hour, and before that, 91 was about as hard as we've seen him. So he's got the endurance, and he's feeling really good. Swing and a miss, and down goes Costantino. Campbell now two outs away, and yet another strikeout. He's now got nine just above the belt and that is just heat just above there and that's as much emotion as you're going to see out of him all day right there he was pumped up uh, just because of that pitch location just above the belt looks like 10 miles an hour harder now wagner as i referenced both of his outs have been strikeouts they're going to stick with him though as the first pitch comes in low 25 outs deep in a bid for a cowboy no hitter. A called strike there makes it one and one to Jack Wagner, the sophomore out of Wichita. And he's just now to 90 pitches. That's the pitch that got Campbell through this game. That breaker, he was working fastballs, but about the fifth inning, he started working backwards. He started leading guys with breakers, and he could throw that for a strike. He's been working ahead all day, but it's been with two different pitches the way he's getting ahead. Two and one to Wagner. That's a strike at the knees. And now Wagner down to his last strike. Trying not to take a sombrero with an 0 for 3 with three Ks. That was his hardest pitch of the game, believe it or not. Called strike three, got him. Outer half of the plate, Wagner frozen. A tenth strikeout for Justin Campbell, and now he's one out away as Connor Van Cleve digs in from the left-hand side. Okay, two breaking balls, slow as you can get, just roller breakers, then what happened? Fastball at 93 at the knees, harder than he's throwing the ball all game, and 95 right on the corner. I mean, that without a swing. How are you throwing 95 right now in the ninth and you haven't even, you've been 88 to 90 the whole game? That is adrenaline throwing. He's not showing it, but th that guy is pumped. Justin Campbell vying to become the first Cowboy hurler to fire a no-hitter since 1993, and that was a combined no-hitter. They've had 10 in their illustrious history, eight by individual pitchers, two by a collective effort. He would be the ninth individual pitcher. He starts off Van Cleve 1-0. Blows that one by him, though, at 93, and now he's rearing back for something extra, 95 pitches deep. 
That's the best velo we've seen the last few innings. He is getting stronger and stronger. Love this from Coach Price. Tough lefty to give yourself a chance. Now Kansas and Van Cleve down to their final strike. Campbell ahead one and two on Connor Van Cleve. One pitch away from Cowboy baseball history. And that one's lifted foul to stay alive by Van Cleve. This game has not been in doubt since the first inning when the Cowboys posted nine runs. The drama throughout has been, can he stay perfect? Now can he throw a no-hitter, the one-two. Called strike three, and there it is. Cowboy history is made by Justin Campbell, a no-hitter here in Lawrence, and the Cowboys win it 19 to nothing. The 11th no-hitter in OSU baseball history goes to Justin Campbell. A masterful job with 11 strikeouts, just one walk in the eighth inning, and 27 outs without a hit. Mobbed on the mound by his teammates. The redshirt freshman will savor this day for the rest of his life. The Cowboys win it 19 to nothing. All right, Brian, eight innings, he was a good pitcher. That ninth inning, he became a major league type pitcher. That showed some heart. That kid is a absolute battler. What a performance. You got to love to see that. His team almost killed him right there. They love that so much. That's as good a performance as you're ever going to see on this field. Great job, buddy. You, you, if you get one run in that game, you win that game. Great pitching performance. And look for Oklahoma State to keep moving up. What I saw is Josh Holiday, the coach, while they were mobbing each other, what'd he do? He went and grabbed that ball. You know, I, that ball is special. That's not going to be done again. And Brett Vossett, good job breaking something up. But this guy was special. Not the best pitcher I've ever seen, but he has had the best performance I've ever seen by a long shot. And to do it on the same day as 19 runs offensively, you never see anything like it. We referenced it last night in the big leagues. Wade Miley didn't even have any run support until the ninth. He had nine runs, did Campbell, right out the gate, as you're seeing right here. The Cowboys swinging a hot bat early and often, never looked back after a nine-run first. But the common denominator throughout, Campbell posting zeros on the board. Did not allow a base runner until the eighth. Did not allow a hit ever. A complete game, 27 out, no hitter, all by that man, Justin Campbell, with 11 strikeouts, including the big K of Connor Van Cleve looking to end it on this pitch right here. A masterful day on the mound, history is made. Justin Campbell, a no-no in Lawrence, and the Cowboys take the series on a Saturday. For Kevin Wheeler, this is Brian Haney saying so long from Lawrence.